Here's the page where we tackled this system before to calculate the system head relationship. We had a pump pumping some water 40 meters up a hill uh, through some piping with a collection of fittings. And eventually we worked our way through down here and got a relationship for what the uh, system head would have to be for the particular case. And we generalized that to what it would have to be for a variety of different flow rates to get this curve here. And if I calculate those numbers out, this system head is going to have to be 40 meters to overcome the elevation change, plus 4,027 times Q squared to overcome the friction losses and the minor losses along the way in the piping. So we were able to get that equation on paper. We'll go on and have a look at how we can get the same kind of thing in a uh, Python notebook so that we can do some what if kinds of calculations without having to do all of this over and over again. Now let's take this system and make it a little more particular. We'll get a little more detail here. The overall configuration still looks the same, but we're going to put some real world context to it. So let's suppose that this is our water supply in Kingston, that's Lake Ontario, and we've got a pump that's some distance below the water surface to make sure that we get enough uh, NPSH that we don't have cavitation. We've still got our two gate valves to just be able to shut things off and this globe valve which would let us control. This swing check valve that keeps the water from flowing backwards. We're going to be interested in knowing how long it is through the pipe to get to the pump because that will again have an effect on the NPSH. And finally, when it gets up to the top here, it's filling up a water tower, which is 40 meters above street level, so that we can provide enough pressure to supply our application. Now, we'll take a simplified approach to our application. We'll say that we've got uh, a very small part of, a, of the community where our design flow rate is by, determined by 750 people all want to take a shower at the same time at about 8 liters per minute. And that's where our design flow rate of about 0.1 cubic meter per second comes from. Now, obviously, if we had a larger community, we'd have to have a larger design flow rate. But this at least provides us with some context. So the flow will depend on what the actual head is that's available. If our water tower isn't full to 40 meters, then we'll get less flow. And the head to drive that flow is proportional to the flow squared, or put the other way, the flow will be proportional to the square root of the head available to drive that flow. We've got all of these quantities, total pipe length dictated by geography because it's got to be long enough to get to our water tower. The inside diameter of the pipe, that's a design choice that we're going to make. Pipe wall roughness, it's kind of a design choice, uh, but we're mostly stuck with the fact that we're going to use steel pipe, so that's going to give us a, a particular pipe wall roughness. Our pump model and impeller size, definitely a design choice, and we've already looked at how we might select that pump. The height of the tower when full, well that's a design choice, but a typical value would be this 40 meters that we put in here. That would give typical municipal water pressure levels down here where these 750 people are taking a shower. We need to know the distance down or up to the pump suction. That's a design choice that we can make. The bigger this number is going to be below the surface of the water, the deeper the basement we're going to have to dig to put that pump into. And we can also control the cross-section size of our tower. This water tower tank, it's going to have some cross-sectional area. And the bigger the cross-sectional area, the larger the capacity of the tank is going to be as it drains down from, say, 40 meters down towards 30 meters. So there's our, our system design. And we're going to try to play with these numbers and see how it affects our choices about whether or not we use this pump and how well it's going to function. Let's look at some practical questions now that we've got our uh, domestic water supply tank system uh, as an example. So if the tank is full and it's 40 meters above grade, what is the supply pressure? Well, P will be equal to rho G times the height of the tank, as long as we're not losing a significant amount of friction. 
And if I multiply that out, I'll get 392 kilopascals. That's about 3.9 atmospheres. So three times high, th almost four times higher than atmospheric pressure. Or in traditional units, 57 psi gauge pressure. So this is a typical sort of supply pressure that we might see arriving at our door in lots of uh, domestic water supply situations. Now, our flow rate, if we had our full HT, we'd get the design flow rate. But how much is it going to drop if our tank isn't quite full? Well, remember we said that the flow rate is going to be proportional to the square root of the height of the surface in the tank above our supply level. And if we took some constant, some uh, uh, capability constant, uh, C sub A, that would give us an equation rather than just a proportionality. Now we know that our design flow, 0 0.1 cubic meters per second, we're delivering what we need at 40 uh, meters of elevation. So we can solve this one to get what CA is. And plugging in some numbers, I get 0 0.0158. So we can then ask ourselves, if we have our water tank height at 40 meters, what is Q going to be? Well, if I put CA in there and do the calculation, unsurprisingly, but as a good check, I get 0 0.100 out of my equation. If I go to 39 meters, so the tank is down a little bit, I'll get 0 0.099. So almost full design flow. I don't think I'd notice that if I was standing in my shower. If it was down some more, down to 37 meters, 0 0.096. So we've got a significant drop here in the water tower height, and yet we're not seeing as big a drop, not nearly as big a drop, in the flow rate delivered to everybody's shower. And finally, some other numbers. If it's at 35 meters or even as low as 30 meters, 25% down, we'll get 0.093 or 0.087. So even if I'm 25% down on the height, I still get 87% of the flow. That's pretty good. If I was one of those 750 people taking a shower, I would consider that level of function to be okay. So that brings us to the question, if I've managed to fill up the water tower and I've got my peak load because all 750 of us got up at the same time to take our shower, how long does it take for the head in the tank to drop by that 25%? Well, that's going to depend on the size of the tank. So we need to know what the diameter of the tank is, and I arbitrarily said it might be about 5 meters in diameter. And I picked this number because when I multiply pi d squared over 4, I get a cross-sectional area for the tank of a nice round 20 square meters. So it makes it easy to do the math. So the volume that has to flow will be the change in the height of the tank times the cross-sectional area of the tank. So if it's going to drop by 10 meters and it's got a 20 square meter cross-section, then that'll be 200 cubic meters. If our flow rate is 0.1 cubic meters per second, then to get 200 cubic meters, that'll take 2,000 seconds at the design flow rate. And that's about 33 minutes at design flow of 0 0.01, or sorry, 0 0.1 cubic meters per second. Now, in reality, it's going to take longer than that because as the height is going down towards 30, the flow is actually going down. So in the real situation, it'll be slower. And the reason for that is that the volume is actually the integral over time of the flow times dt, and that flow is decreasing with time. But this gives us an idea that it's going to take 33 minutes before we get down to a level of performance that is just, from my point of view, okay. So anybody who's spending 33 minutes in the shower 
we might notice that the water pressure is dropping by then. But if some of us are turning off the shower, then that could give our, uh, our pumping system some time to catch up and fill the water tower back up again. So this 33 minutes, it gives us an idea of how the, the system's going to perform. Now finally, if we're operating this system this way, how are we going to control when we turn the pump on and off? In this instance, we were looking at how long would it take to drop by 25% if we weren't putting any new water into the top of the tank. Whereas, in fact, we'll probably be running our pump. So, strategies we could take? Well, we could turn it on and run it till it's full, then turn it off. That's one option. Or we could just leave it on and let the overflow go to the sewer. I'm not sure that would be a great way to go, but there are lots of systems where you run the pump continuously and just let whatever's uh, excess to requirements flow back into the reservoir. So we'll test this idea, but I don't think that's going to be a good solution. Alternately, we could also leave the pump on all the time. That means that we don't have to be constantly switching it on and off. And we could adjust the flow with the uh, valve on the output of the pump. So we've got a variety of ways that we could operate this system. To decide the way we would operate it, we'd really need to explore the overall performance and look at the consequences. And to do that, we probably need a computerized solution rather than a pencil and paper solution, because we're going to test a lot of different possibilities here.